Chair now recognize Mr. Moskowitz for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. By the way, how are you doing? Good? Okay. Congress Member Moskowitz, welcome to the Midas Touch Network. So walk us through what went down in this hearing today, yet another MAGA Republican hearing into Hunter Biden. It's been 15 months now. You would not let them off the hook. So just take us through what went down. Yeah, it's like Groundhog Day. We're at the scene where Bill Murray and the Groundhog are in the car driving off the cliff, just trying to get out of it. I mean, this was, uh, I mean, what was it, six hours? It's the same stuff. They got nothing new. Yeah, they had, you know, Tony Bobolinsky and some guy in prison today looking for a pardon. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I, I mean, seriously, it's like, what does a Chinese foreign agent, Russian disinformation, and a felon in jail have in common? James Comer. They, uh, James Comer is what they have all in common. I mean, this is how low they've sunk. And so all I all I wanted to do is first check in with James. How's he doing? Right. You know, mental health check. Um, but I mean, you know, I go last. They bury me at the end uh, of of the hearing. And so I just spent my five minutes, you know, asking Tony, does he think the president should be impeached? And he said, yeah, Joe Biden should be impeached. So I was like, well, Tony, you know, Chairman Comer and Chairman Jordan are right here. Ask them when they're going to schedule the impeachment. Like, when are we going to have it? And they're like, well, you know, we don't do snap impeachments. It's been 15 months. If they have found that Joe Biden committed a high crime and misdemeanor, then they would have called for the impeachment. So they haven't found any evidence that Joe Biden did anything wrong, which is why they haven't they haven't called for it. And oh, by the way, they also don't have the votes because they got another Republicans who don't want to vote for that. They got Ken Buck literally retiring, saying the speaker can't keep him here to vote on an unconstitutional uh, impeachment. And so today's just another bad day for them. It's the same stuff. I think the American people has kind of tuned this out. They really, they realize this is an absolute horror show, which is why I wear a mask today, because if you're attending a horror show, you got to dress up. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that's where we are, guys. I mean, that, that, that's it. And I, we might have more of these. You know, the, I mean, you know, I think, I think the body is dead and cold and rigor mortis has set in, but hey, they, they want to keep going. You know, you did bring the Putin mask, and it's such a bizarre and dangerous. First off, do you have the mask? I do. I do. He's right here. He's right here. There, there, there you go. There and, and literally, as, as it turns now, out, I broke out in hives after wearing it, so I, I decided not to wear it uh, any longer. But look, it's for visual learners because let's forget, remember how we got here. Fifteen months ago, Comer and company talked about this ten twenty three form ten twenty three. Right. And this was the reason we needed to open up the inquiry into Joe Biden, because Joe Biden got tens of millions of dollars. Ten million is what they said, actually. OK, and we, had, we went into a skiff and we had classified briefings and they went and they went out and they talked about this at the podium. And, and this whole thing started on the 1023 form. And as it turns out, everything in the 1023 form was false. They now know that. Right. Their guy, their their whistleblower lied. And all of the lies, and he's been indicted, all of the lies, where did it come from? It came from Russian intelligence. So this entire thing, James Comer, allowed to be birthed into existence based on Russian intelligence. So that's why I, I, I wore the mask for a, a couple of moments, because that's why we're here. James Comer you know, participated in this, and they're still letting it go on, even though it started on a lie from Russia. You know, you and your Democratic colleagues, like you've done with some of these other hearings, though, really kind of took back the hearing to focus the attention on those issues that MAGA Republicans are quite literally laundering in disinformation from Vladimir Putin and also focusing on what the real issue is here, what MAGA Republicans want to distract from, which is the fact that Donald Trump, when he was disgracing the office and to this day is doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin. I think Lev Parnas came off as a star witness today. I was actually very impressed. By, I mean, I know Lev, but I thought his presentation today was, I thought, impressive. He had great recall and, you know, he fessed up and owned up to what he did wrong. And this was one of, I thought, the highlights uh, from this. I'd love to get your reaction to it. Let's play this clip. But, but lots of times. Is there anything that you'd like to relate to us about your conversations with Donald Trump that would bear on the uh, conduct of these proceedings? I mean, Donald Trump was aware of everything that was going on on that day in the Red Room when we were in uh, the 
uh, White House after Rudy bringing Donald Trump up to speed on uh, that I could go out to Ukraine and get Viktor Shokin. Donald Trump approached me, shook my head, said, thank you for all that you're doing. Keep up the good work, patted me on the back, took pictures, and I was off to Ukraine. To meet with Viktor Shokin? To, to find Viktor Shokin, to bring him back here to meet with Lindsey Graham. Got it. Then he talked about how he wanted to bribe Shokin on behalf of Trump. What was your reaction to all of that? Well, I mean, look, we were hearing live what we, we've known and it had been reported, right, that in this, you know, Rudy Giuliani effort uh, that Donald Trump was was involved, right? And they were working with, you know, foreign agents to try to drum up false false information. Uh, and so, look, again, uh, you know, this this whole this is this is just like a sideshow. I, I mean, and I don't know what the American people are thinking. Because, you know, the American people are seeing, you know, issues around the world, um, you know, with Ukraine or Israel or even stuff going on now in Haiti that's concerning in the Western Hemisphere. You know, they're worried about, you know, even though the economy is going great, they're still concerned about uh, inflation, you know, whether it's healthcare costs or housing costs or food costs. Uh, and the folks in charge of Congress, the House, that can help the American people have chosen not to do that. They've removed the speaker. They've impeached their own member, removed him, uh, and impeached the cabinet secretary. That hasn't happened in 50 years. That's it. And we're, we're running the country like a corner store. Like, you know, is the government going to close this week? Tune in to the next episode. And then, you know, we vote to keep it open for 45 days. And, and, and I just can't imagine what people at home are thinking, like, how is this helping me? you know, these Hunter Biden hearings that they're spending millions of dollars of taxpayer money. A and worse yet, they're lying to their base. They're going on Newsmax or Fox or doing podcasts and lying to their base. Guys, they're never going to impeach Joe Biden. It's never going to happen. And so, um, look, I think, again, uh, led by Jamie Raskin, I think the Democrats did a, a, a good job today. But yeah, look, my colleagues across the aisle make it easy. They make it easy when they look like a deer in the headlights and give me blank stares when I ask them, when is the impeachment vote going to happen? And they look at me like, well, I don't know, maybe you know. And I'm just like, OK, so nobody knows because it's not going to happen. You know, they always say a great trial lawyer never asks a question that they don't know the answer to. But you know the answer in advance because they choreograph it all the time. And I mean, when you put them on the spot like that. If they truly had a plan, their response would be, well, OK, we'll take you up on it. We'll do the impeachment vote, which is what they're telling their base. But I want to talk to you about this, too. I don't know if it's because of the State of the Union, the fact that it's now clear that this is definitively going to be President Biden versus Donald Trump. There does seem to be a bit of a momentum shift, a change amongst the American public, people getting very serious and starting to look at this in a different way, not a theoretical way. A am I just buying into all the anecdotal commentary that I just receive, or are you seeing similar things like that on Capitol Hill? Well, I mean, look, there's no doubt it's the State of the Union. So like, first of all, right, they're, they've been telling the American people that Joe Biden's a corpse, and, and then he jumps out of the casket Right. And and shows them that he's still the president. He's the boss and he's not to be trifled with uh, and just immediately dispelled the stuff they've been feeding the American people for months now. Then, of course, you have Senator Britt because, you know, everything's you know kind of like a binary choice. She goes and, and does like, you know, I, I don't even I don't even like know what that was. I feel like she did SNL before SNL did her. OK. Uh, and that that was a, a god awful uh, failure. But yeah, we're in a binary choice now, right? It's Trump versus Biden. And you might not, you know, there, there's some people, you know, on the progressive side that, you know, might not love everything President Biden has done, but the other choice is Trump, right? And that's it, right? And so, you know, a vote for a third party, that's a vote for Trump. Uh, and so uh, I think also Biden is getting out there more. I think he's doing much better on communications, being himself. Joe Biden's a funny guy. He's very personable, right? He can connect with people. You got to let him do that. And so I think the campaign is now in full swing. That's also the other thing uh, that I think uh, is absolutely different. And look, every time Donald Trump opens up his mouth, uh, you know, it's a win for Joe Biden.
Yeah. And finally, what do you make of that? I mean, Donald Trump's statements, setting aside the bloodbath, you know, statement. I mean, the fact that he leads all of his it's events. Blood by death. Pray. It's be a bloodbath. And then he's like, oh, I meant that was about used cars. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, and, and then, but he still starts all of his rallies by changing the lyrics to our national anthem, and he's re reframed it as the J sixth anthem. He salutes the J sixth insurrectionists and calls them hostages. You have that voice of God or whatever they call it at the beginning of the speech. Goes, ladies and gentlemen, the unfairly treated hostages, and that's real. That's not SNL. That's what's. And then they play the J sixth anthem. We've been talking about it here all the time, and now I think people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He he does that. Yeah, he does. Yeah, Trump. Trump and many of his followers, these were the guys that were you know, burping up their lunch when, you know, they saw, you know, the NFL stuff going on in the NFL that they didn't like with the national anthem. And now they're 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 changing the national anthem with literally insurrectionists sitting in jail, uh, by the way, connected to our hearing today. Right. One of their witnesses was was in jail. Uh, and so I, I don't know what's going on. I feel like we live in an alternate universe. You know, every day it seems to be getting worse. We're building clearly uh, up until up until the election. You know, but the American people have to hang in there. They got to go vote early. They got to vote sure. by mail. They got to vote uh, on a, on election day. And maybe we can kind of put this chapter behind us after we get Joe Biden reelected. You know, your state. I said final question, but I lied. Your state very interesting. Some of the results. Um, from Tuesday in the primaries with Nikki Haley still getting somewhere near 200,000 votes. Even if you looked in some deep red pockets within Florida, you know, you saw a lot of votes towards Nikki Haley. I mean, you know, the state um, better than just about anyone. I mean, is, is there a vibe, a willingness towards, you know, look like, like, let, it's not necessarily even a Democrat and a Republican thing. Like this is a, a normalcy thing and a competence thing more than anything right now. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think Donald Trump's floor and ceiling are very close to each other. Uh, and there is no doubt that there is a Republican voter out there that will go vote for Republicans in the Senate and will go vote for Republicans in the House and will not vote for Trump. I don't know if they skip him. I don't know if they vote for Biden. I don't know if they vote for a third party or maybe they just stay home. But there is definitely a decent amount of Republicans out there, especially in red Florida. I mean, good. we're the home of Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. Right. I mean, and Florida has clearly gone uh, more Republican over the last couple of years. A and yet, even after Nikki Haley is well out of the race, uh, you're still seeing Republicans go vote for her. That's a protest vote uh, against uh, against Donald Trump. And I don't think those people are going to vote for him uh, in uh, in the general election in November. So, yeah, look, there's some definitely mathematical issues that are coming to the forefront as we move in these states when we're seeing uh, the protest vote against uh, Donald Trump in Republican primaries. Congressman, thank you for joining us and thank you for what you do all days. But especially today, it was, it was great seeing you there questioning and cross-examining those witnesses. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hit subscribe. Let's get to that 3 million subscriber mark. And special thanks to the congressman for joining us here on the Midas Touch Network. Have a wonderful day. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.